Okay. Now, right when when you said when you said that, um, I'm thinking of the first thing I saw. I was always like like in the schoolyard playing and so forth. The first thing I saw was, you know, the colors, not the children so much, but just colors. And colors have um but I have um seen um there were so many colors that I have seen and it just gave me lots of ideas, so, so to speak. And um and I've gravitated towards those ideas. And then later on in my life I just went on into um, so many other things that dealt with power and doing things, yeah. And, and you know what, what I'll add to that question is I know that you have a process when you're getting dressed in the morning. I love your, your sense of style, right? You always got some bright color on, on top. What's your process when you're picking out clothes? Um, especially if you're going to some powerful meeting, I know that back in the day, you used to meet with legislators to advocate for disability rights and all of these fun things. And for you, you wanted to make sure that you were heard and seen. Um, so what was your process when you were meeting with a mayor or someone? How did you pick out colors for that meeting? Okay, now my process for when I was, um, to whom I was meeting with, um, well, there was someone in power, so I was going to um, an interview or somewhere. Um, I do a lot of, my sight is not well at all. I'm legally blind and I'm also deaf, but also with those limitations, I use tactile, kinesthetic tactile. And so I would feel um, a lot of uh, my clothing and so forth. And that's how I would, um, you know, pick out which is the best one that would stand out for me. And I would always look, basically, I have like a, a what, the, a color chart that helps me select a lot of my colors, whether they're strong or they're not so strong. And basically, um, I use all of those things. That, so I get a little earlier, so because I know I had to have a process to go through. And um, that's how I would pick and select my colors. Because I want you to see me before I even arrive. I want to be very powerful, authentic. So I speak. love it. Yeah. And before we open it up, the audience might, after hearing from you, they may want to ask a few questions too. So my final question to you, Betty, is um, you've intentionally selected the images on the screen right now. Um, what do these yes. images mean to you? What do these colors mean to you? Why do they make you feel safe right now as you're talking to us? Yes. Okay. Now, um, here on your right, I'm looking at the nighttime sky. I mean, I don't always see the beautiful stars that are uh, sparkling all the time, but the nighttime sky, when it sort of like envelopes the earth and you would just feel very cohesive. I mean, that is my feeling um, um, at night. But I remember um, being at the park and you know, playing around and it was always when, when night falls, get home. And that's when I just felt safe. I'm below the earth. And then I will take this, the um the picture up here on your uh, on your left. Um now when I see that, it's like a blue, I mean that symbolize warmth. So that's um the warmth and the ocean mist. It's like uh, walking through the sand or like meditating, basically. And then when it comes down to the brain, which is on um your far left lower left, um, I'm very intrigued by that because I've always, I'm always doing, I've always like even reading books or things with the brain, looking up information because I have a lot of these issues, a central nervous system, once that's tech, you are diagnosed with everything. So I'm always looking into, um, things that's dealing with the brain and you know just be very scientific I didn't know that part of me but I do I have it and I like it yes. thank you so much Betty for sharing so we have a few minutes if anyone wants to put in the chat questions for Betty or comments to Betty um, thank you for being op an open book tonight I know that you've 
never really shared besides your family no one else really knows that your story a little um you know and, and how colors have have impacted you in this way so thank you for being open tonight mm -hmm. thank you all right we do have a question in the chat oh thank you for sharing your story betty thank you pretty okay. thank you okay all right and as um maybe as more questions come in we'll address them a question while folks maybe are contemplating questions, um, a question to those in the audience. We want to know, how does this color make you feel? And this time we've actually given you some answer choices to select from. So of these four, what comes to mind immediately when you see the color orange? Is it a creative, lighthearted, youthful feeling? Is it a feminine, innocent, and gentle feeling? Is it a natural and earthy or rough feeling? Or is it a curious and happy and warm feeling? So feel free to put the letter that corresponds with your answer in the chat. Ooh, I see some answers coming in. Great. All right. So there's a mix of answers in the chat. Um, and there are a few people who think A, and that is, again, this is according to research, but we are the studies of research, right? So we are the participants. So if you think D, and that's how orange makes you feel, then you are not wrong. It's just that and the average person, right? Because that's all research is, average. Um, the average person would think A. And so what they found is that orange is supposed to evoke a sense of creativity, lightheartedness, and youth. Um, youthfulness. The other colors um, based on, you know, psychological research. Um, so the brown is said to be a natural, earthy, rough feel. Um, pink, we know historically has been used for feminine, innocent, and gentle, but that actually in our new era um, is, it's, it's being reconsidered, right? Pink, pink is no longer um, used for feminine and innocent. A lot of women are sort of rebranding it and you know, saying, hey, we're speaking up for ourselves, we're vocal, we're, right, we're strong, and, and they're using the color pink to, to share that message. Um, and then yellow, curiosity, happy, and warm. All right, my favorite part, um, before we end tonight, we want to hear from you. Um, so my favorite part of, the ep of tonight will be um, kind of thinking through this scenario. So the scenario we have for you, Betty and I, is that you just learned, I can't wait for this to be a reality for me, but you just learned that you've been selected to speak at the 2022 Women Future Conference. And this is a real thing. Um, there's such a thing out there. And this annual event draws high powered female founders and CEOs from across the world. Exciting, yay, can't wait to be there. But little nerve wracking, right? You're wondering what color should I don for this exciting speaking engagement? So some questions we want you to consider as you're coming up with your answer is how would you like others to see you? And then what statement, Betty talked about this when she was talking about her process of getting dressed to talk to powerful people. What statement do you want to make when you enter a room? Betty said she wanted to be seen, she wanted to be taken seriously, feel authoritative, right? So what statement are you wanting to make? Yes. And what values or ideals? And I don't think we think about the values and ideals much. We think about the statement, I think. We know what we want to portray, but what values do you want to send to? What message in terms of your values and your ideals? And then how do you want to feel on stage? Now I'll admit when I answer some of these questions, sometimes they conflict, right? So how I want others to see me and how I want to feel may not match. My values may not match the statement I want to make. Um, so let's just take maybe three minutes to think about okay. this and then we'll come back together and share out, okay? Okay, can I ask too? Uh, yes, Betty, so let's, um, Let's give folks some thinking time. I'll set the timer. Maybe two minutes is enough, actually. Okay. Or even a minute. Let's say a minute. And then we'll come back and you can start us off, Betty. So in a minute.
Okay. And there's my handy dandy timer. You can tell that I was a former teacher. We always have a timer yes. going. <laughs> Only teachers use timers. Okay. Um, so Betty, feel free to start us off. I've also been jotting down notes. Okay. Now what I would like to do, there's four questions there. So I would like to take um, line by line, I gather, um, how would you like other people to see you? Well, as I said before, I like um, for people to see me, um, I want to be so powerful and um, authentic in my dress. I want you to see me before I arrive there. And what statement would I like to make? Well, basically I would like to uh, make a very um, conservative and powerful statement and that would be all in my dress. Because what I would like to pair with it, I would like to pair a tweed with a dark black. There's different shades of black, but I would pair it with a um, dark black and tweed because that's serious, distinctive, elegance is bold, powerful, and very expensive. And uh, it could also denote, um, you know, death or like nighttime. And number three there, what values and ideals do you want to portray? I want to portray, she's serious and she knows where she's going. She knows what she wants. So don't play with her. Be honest and direct. That's what I would like to portray. And how do you want to feel on stage? Yes, I want to feel very uh, powerful on stage. I want to feel 